the winning record, and it is looking like he will lock that in. It's really hard to look for some sort of side laning champion that's going to have a lot of strong pushing power into this draft for Afrika because that first Herald, because both these teams are so early game focused that the Calista gives you so much power in those first few objectives. The Kaisa will be great for, you know, when Diana starts to get a little bit stronger later on to follow up for that aggression. So, a lot of respect has to be shown for Fate here or he will find himself falling further and further behind if he does get ganked. So that's somebody to keep an eye on. You can see the NAR matchup on the top. Oh, hold that oh, ball, though. Oh, they're going. They're going to get the cleanse out of Leo right away. And it was very obvious when they were going to hit level two, right? I mean, that was the second line of melee minions. They took them all down. And Okay, let's see how this one does work out. Trying to get the Conqueror down. The stun is going to miss, and the teleport is out. But they're still going for the kill, and they still will be able to pick it up as Fate guts in there, and he's got vision now. The trading is still going on, but the Q will land, and Fate will at least be able to trade one back. Yep, one for one here. First blood, though, you know, <laughs> over to the side of Afrika. Going to be a nice start here. You really have to respect the power of Viego in this matchup. And you can see that even with the teleport from Fate, he does not have six, and he does not know that Dread is... They should go on a fly here. I don't know why Fly moved up that far away when Fate hits level six. Felt safe, and actually a ton of damage comes up. It's actually an elaborate bait all in the end, apparently. This fly is able to... Now Croc was up here. Okay, Equalizer in, and Keen does take a hefty amount of damage, and you see Dread is nowhere to be seen. Keen just trying to use every ability that he has, but the Flash comes in, and one more Harpoon will do it. Summit is not backing down, even after getting slowed. Live Sandbox very aggressively believe they can take this fight, especially with the Mega bar coming in here. Let's see, the Mist is set up. Keen is looking for picks. The flank. And he's always checking for it, but... It is a Lee Sin, so it could happen. That is a massive solar flare right with the Equalizer on top of it. And Fate gets into the back line just trying to assassinate Lehans. And he's able to flash away to safety afterwards. Effort sets up another kill, but actually maybe going a little bit too far this time around. Was feeling himself a little bit, and for a good reason. And now we have Keen. He's he's pretty strong here on the front line. you got to respect him, even though for now he's only the Leona. He will be able to ult it, maybe a little bit too far. Stuns back, trying to help and peel for his team. Dread goes in the front line, and he's able to peel as well. And Kane is just going like a madman as Leo is able to snipe down Summit as well. And Afrika with patience. Despite all of the best efforts we saw here from Fate to lock him down, watch how Fate flanks here and looks for Leo. He uses Lehens to get to Leo the first time as he gets in here with a kick. Cues to him and then it gets on top of Leo, but Leo kites back. The rest of the front line here for Afrika is just playing out the longer game, knowing that actually Keen will win this. Now they try to use, the second time Fate tries to use Keen to actually close the gap to get onto Leo, but Leo is always exactly where he needs to be in this fight. He gets pushed away, but look at the hands, he's there to save him, and Leo just does so much. And all the while, while that's happening, Dread goes in, gets a three-man Moonfall, and snipes one member, gets everybody, uh, Kai'Sa like Diego, obviously, that are going to just love those scenarios. They're not going to love this, though. The perfect position for the Equalizer's effort now goes in, and the Fates Call will bring him out. Fly trying to continue this. Let's fight. Fate, rather, thinking about continuing on to Fly, but will not go for it. Fly didn't have that much grit, but he really wanted to hit that Haymaker in the choke. Not sure about this one, Keen. Trying to get there on the front line. There's the kick that does come in. Dread now able to follow up, but that is a massive gnar into the wall, but it's just a huge skirmish going back and forth, and the damage from the rumble is gigantic as everybody groups up for that one, and this time it's Lynch Sandbox's fight to take. Definitely a massive overextension here for Afrika Freaks. They didn't have the cooldowns to continue to actually push that issue when Fly had already just used, you know, that Haymaker right before. He wasn't able to do a whole lot in the beginning of that exchange when we did see uh, Keen walk back in, and in a choke like that, Rumble is going to do so much damage, whether it's with Equalizer or with just his Flame Spitter here. So it starts off with that engage with Equalizer. Then the turn comes through, and you can see that Fly is trying to really turn this into an amazing fight for them, but it's a nice disengage. Fate's Call comes through. 
and then they come back in a second time, and this is when Keen really overextends. He takes so much damage in this fight that he can't actually be a part of it anymore. Doesn't have the same ability to sustain. Someone has a massive Narbar, and it's just an easy cleanup from here. Like, you just don't have the cooldowns anymore, and you let the Narbar charge. Should have just cut your losses and walked away. It's more aggressive. Mahans is pretty far out there, and they throw him behind as the kick as well is pretty big. The solar fight against Sonya, though, and Effort's taking a lot of damage. Trying to get out of this one now, but they are going to lock him down. Summit gets an R to the wall, picks up a kill, but actually Fly tries to make something of it. And finally, front to back comes in. Keen trying to pick off one member Y1. Can he actually do it as Bait is going into the back line, able to assassinate the Braum, but everything behind him is falling to pieces. He's trying to see if he can get Leo here. Prince trying to hop away from this one. He will be able to get away from the set, but not from the Viego. As Zade is just, Fate rather, is just a one-man army at this point. Yeah, the stopwatch buys time for Leo, but they're not able to catch Fate in the end, so... As we got Narbars reaching completion. That is a gigantic equalizer trying to use that as the kick comes in. Fly with the big haymaker, but he can't survive forever. And that's going to be the Cloud Soul going the way of Liv Sandbox. They're looking for more, actually, with the Solar Flare that comes in, the Flash and the Slow from the house. And Dread will be able to run for now, but the chase here from the side of Liv Sandbox. That movement speed's pretty big. There are no slaps. They're trying to turn it around, though, as Leo's getting in the back line, and he's got Viego to back him up. They're trying to assassinate everybody, and the tanks of the team are actually doing a really good job of buying time, but can they do it 2v3 is the question, as Effort's going to go down, and you just can't fight against this Viego and this Kai'Sa right now. He has to somehow execute the Kai'Sa again here. Fate, he has his resurrection available, but he just can't get past Keen. Croc was going to try to collapse back in. He's got his equalizer again. Cloud Soul's pretty strong. He wants to fight. He wants to get in there. I'm not sure if he can do it. 1v2, though. Stopwatch is good here. Leo's coming back in. Leo's coming in, and the... Oh, man, the sustain is just ridiculous. I think the only way you win this fight is if Fate kills Leo. I don't think there's any way you're ever going to kill a very fed Viego at this stage in the game. <laughs> uh, you know, otherwise, here, when you're looking for the equalizer to collapse in, it's just not going to happen. This is such a crazy game. I love it. Yeah, this is awesome. As here we go, the Baron's going down, but Liv Sandbox, everybody's here, trying to go for the fight now, as no smite will come in from Liv Sandbox because Krako is still dead. And as we get the knock up here from the Braum, Summit is left to die. Nobody can get in there to help him, and now it's, and back onto the Elder Drake we go. Summit here, they're trying to get on top of him. That is Fly right into the back line, but the equalizer is pretty good, but Fate in the back line, trying to get it done as Leo is trying to take down Summit now. It has just been a massive engage into that back line. Keen trying to go 1v5 at this point in time, but he absolutely cannot. As Liv Sandbox stay as a ball, and they will not be dominated and picked apart this time around, as now teleports come out and Liv Sandbox want to take the game. They're going to go to end the game. Keen's coming up here right now to try to trade he wants back. to end the game. Yeah, I mean, they've got an inhibitor up here, so there's no way, I mean, there's no way Keen can actually end this. He just simply cannot. Summit goes back, and he's yeah. going to have to back off. The timing of this was really unfortunate, just kind of not having that in his mind in terms of the, the respawn. Even if it isn't up, I mean, I don't think you win this exchange, but he has to try something. That was such a great fight from Summit, though. Without his Narbar, he gets on top of Leo. Okay. Yeah, he's just, he's not going to be able to get back there on time. So there you have it, Live Sandbox. They're going to take down this crazy brawl of a game. Somehow, some way, the Nexus will fall. And then Summit still gets on top of Leo, goes back over the wall when his Narbar is ready. <laughs> Fate's doing tons of damage on the other side. Fly had a nice engage. This game had it all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I am so, I'm so hyped from this first game right now alone. I want to see three from these two teams. Look, and I look, think we will. <laughs> look at the gold difference graph too. That was like. And stealing the Lee Sin ultimate actually means that you have so much disengage too against this style of play. I personally really like the Live Sandbox comp a lot more. Renekton's gonna end up going in the top lane in this case. Silas will match up against the set. Think of the fight is usually not the answer. You want to use it to clean up the fight. As this is gonna operate very differently than what we saw last game for Leo. Because you you have a set, but he's he's he can't initiate a fight. He can pin down one player. 
But when he goes in, he he will never have an out. He will never have an exit. Like he will be trapped. <laughs> yeah. So you actually have to use the set very defensively against this this style of play because Live Sandbox have a comp that goes in very aggressively against you and super incredible timing there. Question is, does it save him anyway? I mean, we have a teleport coming in. Look at Fly's position. The teleport now from the Sandbox is late, but they're still going to wait, delay this one back away. They're actually going to just take down Fate. He goes in and dies, and now Fly is going to easily haymake and tank that one up as Dread will flash. And that is a two for zero for Afrika. What a fantastic start for Afrika here. You lose your teleport as Fate on top of it all, and now Keen is going to push this in. Nothing like that, as instead they're trying to make an aggressive play onto Keen here. And I don't mind this at all. As Dominus comes in, Keen immediately knows that something is afoot. As up comes Krako, and here's Effort as well, gets the headbutt, misses the, the pummel, and actually the auto not going to come in, and the equalizer is here as well, as Krako now has to get away from this one, and 3v1. Although Effort is going to try to make a play here, Leo is going to ultimate away. Killer retreat on that one as the teleport now is getting in onto Lahens. The damage is here as Fly going for the follow up engage takes down Effort, and that is a huge burst in Summit. He's trying to frontline, but he's not tanky right now. He's going to have to back away from that one. So a two for one and the dragon in favor of Afrika. Afrika with such a massive lead now, and this is exactly what I was afraid of for Live Sandbox. You look for the fight, but you can't take it. And this is such a scary play to try to make right now. Here he goes. Trying to go in there is Keen. He's trying to bait them into a fight 4v5. Nearly successful there as Dread almost follows up. Going to be so careful right now as Fate and Croco here. Effort's going to return. Very calm. Not going to fight. Uh -oh. Summit, what are you doing over here? Yeah, he's a little bit caught. He's going to use that second dash to get over the wall, but not before he takes a huge amount of damage. Now trying to kite this one out. They have the Diana coming down. They absolutely want to get in here. Nice buffer on the dredge line, but it might not matter as the rent damage is massive. Oh. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to find whatever angle they can possibly get, but at this point in time, it's a little bit difficult effort. He didn't know it was on the other side of that wall. He's trying to survive here with the Unbreakable Will, but the damage is just too much. And without an Alistair, good luck having a front line. Good luck trying to engage onto this. Everything on the side of Afrika is still available. Yeah, just because you have two control wards in that brush doesn't mean you, you could see what's in the other brush. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they just didn't have any vision whatsoever. He was trying to check for that. He dies. You hit your item spikes, spikes before you feel forced to get into a fight. Yeah, Diana wanted to go back and upgrade boots. She's going to have to stay here now. Okay, well, Summit just pushes a little uh, bit too far forward, gets kicked into two members. This is what happens when you have zero vision is... You always have to either play super passively, or you, you're, you're just going to die, right? <laughs> They've been shown multiple times, time after time, that they can't actually get in here. Not sure about this one, Keen, trying to turn this one around, but actually ends up beating them into a really big equalizer. A lot of Live Sandbox just out of this one. They're trying to get into the back line. That is a big Diana ultimate, but is it going to matter is the question as Leo will survive. Fate desperate to try to take him down. Prince here jumping around, but that's not going to be enough either. This is going to be a clean ace to the side of Afrika. A spy will put the last punch, the last nail in the coffin for this game. There's just no follow-up damage, you know? When the engage comes through, you don't have anything. I mean, look at the items here for Kroko. Feels like a game three is on the horizon. Yeah. Here we go. Fly's going to find the Renekton. Nice stun on the front line. And in goes Leo for the assassination. Going to take down the Croc. Effort desperately trying to help his team here, but he cannot do that. Freka going to take the lives of two, basically for free. And they should just move into the mid lane and take down this game. Very clean game here from Afrika. Not the back and forth we saw in game one. Not the close, tense, non-stop team fighting. Unfortunately, the Silas and the Rectin. Yeah. Summit decides that, okay, I'll, I'll take the bullet for you. <laughs> and it's not going to save his life anyway, as Mr. President will go down. As Here will be the turrets that get taken down as well, and that's going to be the Nexus falling here 26 minutes into the game. As Afrika, at no point in this one, felt any unsafety. And with a lot of these players who are so new to the LCK, you have to pick up the pieces, Go into game through with the right men's mindset. And we can see that everyone. A lot here. 
Okay, so Seth's going to be into this one. Lisa into the top, or rather, Gwen into the top lane, Lisa into the jungle. <laughs> um, set in the mid lane. Set in the mid lane. That's that's where we eventually, I said yeah. it, we set it together, we got it with all these flames. That's what you would expect. Yes. Top lane, can Keen do as much damage as he did in the last game on the Gwen into Nar matchup? We saw that he was easily able to handle Lee Sin into Renekton. Obviously, eventually had some help from his friends to even push that further. Okay, you got to back away, help out that lane a little bit. Stred just does the same thing, <laughs> mirrors it here. But there is, of course, the threat of the dive with Fly. If they're trying to push the lane, and let's see, the teleport will come in. A 4v3 under the turret. Nice engage from Effort, but the Face Breaker comes in from Fly, and they're able to line up one kill. Can they make it two? The answer is no, as the Haymaker doesn't quite well. land. But there's so many minions here. The way they slow push this means that this dive is going to have so much value. As down will go Fate, and down will go Prince. That's going to be a three for zero. Extremely clean on the dive. They did not rush anything, right, except it's on the bottom of the uh, bottom side of the map. We're seeing a lot more dives nowadays as, as teams realize, hey, these comps that are great in engaging, they're also great at diving, right? You're, you're able to face break a couple of guys. You can get the aftershock to tank. And this was not a surprise to Liv Sandbox either. Like, they knew this was coming. Fly left the lane so long ago. You see Prince flashes the Haymaker. But he decides to look for a Q here. He's on the wrong side of the rip, so there's no getting out no matter what, right? Like, yeah. I mean, you can't just run to the right. You're not going to get the execute either. Oh, uh, Twyo. <laughs> very good. And uh, uh, also very good again. <laughs> so, the, Ooh, yeah. I was close, but I got that wave. <laughs> the, the way that Rise gets, you know, the, OK. Oh, we got the ult coming out here. Keen trying to put on the pressure, and he's got Dread. Heading up to the top side. Little does he know there is Krako in the jungle as well. As here comes the rise now on top of Keen. We got a teleport coming in. And Keen will be able to survive. Can we get the turn here? The set ultimate into the wall, and Fate just pops like a balloon. And that teleport was massive. Nice follow up engage here from Fly. Although effort now is coming on up. We got Meganar coming in as well. Big knock up as the damage is coming through here from the side of Liv Sandbox. The follow-up is fantastic, as even Prince Over to Summit. But this fight looks like a bridge too far for Liv Sandbox. So greedy, so risky, right? They come in here with a Realm Warp, and it's a rise at this stage of the game that's super easy to blow up. However, Teleport comes through, they back away, and it's a heroic play from Summit. And what you're going to see come across the map, too, as we roll it forward, is a True Shot Barrage that actually lands here in the middle of this. So Summit re-engages, yeah. the True Shot Barrage comes through, denied, of course, onto Keen, but still does a lot of extra damage here. And then this extended fight, they're able to pull it off despite the fact that Fate had to make a sacrifice to do it. That's a lot of extra gold going over to the NAR, who ends up being the carry. A lot of the times here for <laughs> Summit and uh, and the players that are on these champions, I mean, Summit on, on the NAR, you trust that as Liv Sandbox. This game could definitely flip on its head very quickly. Krako's going to spot Dread, and if a root comes in here, okay, he's got a stopwatch. Krako even flashes in. That stopwatch gets so much value, baits effort into a wrong spot, and the rest of his team is not able to follow up Dread. But it is just the Gwen. Obviously, he can do some fun stuff in 1v1s, but it's not like it's a Gnar or a Mega Gnar, something like that. As here we go, the engage comes in, trying to get into that back line. As tons of damage is coming out, Fly gets a big engage as well. A huge Haymaker! Prince gets some room, and you can see Summit over the wall is actually kiting them out really well. As this is a close one, look at Prince as well on the bottom side, trying to kite them out. He's got the rise on top of him as well, and Afrika overextend here as Dread is able to get the one Udir, but that is it. I feel like I gotta do the finger wag and say, I warned you, Afrika fans, that this might happen. The so extended respectful of the positioning of the rise, because if he stops you from going in, it is just so hard to win that longer fight. Yeah. You never get out. It's just a massive team fight now. Live Sandbox want to be the ones that are engaging. They have some room as the ultimate goes down on a fate, but he's just machine gunning on the bottom side and a massive Noro into the wall. This time around, Prince has a lot more aggression onto him, but it just does not matter as he has the Glacial Shroud after taking down the Baron. Live Sandbox, they have taken off. 
out of the atmosphere right now. They are so far ahead now in this game in the span of like two minutes. It's, I mean, it's a huge turn. And we talked about the items that start to come online. You start to become extremely powerful. Gein even has to walk away here. This fight was won by Summit though, 100%. His big gnar was massive that actually gave a lot of space and did tons of damage to the other side oh, of the no, fight. Gein. He's oh, dead. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, buddy. I know you're frustrated, but you're not gonna you're not gonna save this turret. And can you do it? They say nope, we don't wanna flip. No flips for us, we can just turn it. And they got Summit on the top side. That is big dab is coming out already. Although Keen is trying to trade here front line. Trying to get onto effort as a big knockoff comes in. Fly is going to get isolated and down he will go. The amount of damage that is coming out from the rise in the Ezreal right now is way too much. As Croc goes able to come in and get the flash stunned down. Keen is going like 1v4 in the back line, getting some room now for Leo. And it might not matter because Summit is so huge, but now with Dread, as Prince is trying to kite it out, at the end of the day, the answer is gonna be no. The wallets <laughs> will clamp down and smack. Okay, so if Freak is trying to flip it over the Baron, maybe this is how they get back here. Croco is so tanky right now. As Summit gets him in the back line, a massive wallop in there as he is still alive for so, so long, and he's got the GA as well. We're not gonna see the sustain this time out of Keen, I don't believe the knockup comes in. That is going to be the clean ace. It lives Sandbox with a huge performance here in game three. They will be able to take down Afrika and a huge win tonight. Love to see the tombstone flash there. That is rest in peace. Afrika's composition fell apart at the end of the mid game, the era of the Ezreal rise came to pass here. Live Sandbox with a great start to their draft. The answers, meta-wise, came out from Live Sandbox. They had the Callista. Look they at Leo's damage here. You know, it's not it's not a fault of how he played the team fights. It's a fault of how the composition falls off a cliff yeah. later on. <laughs> Look at that timestamp. The dragon fight, that's like 23 minutes. That's what can happen. I mean, Prince had just begun to hit his power spike. Same with Fate. Thank you very much, guys, to see the season with the POG interview translation. Lip Sandbox is bringing a sandstorm over Afrika. Frick's peaking now. Them and here is Summit and Fate for the POG interview. Congratulations. Lip Sandbox is on a stiff up and off and you scared the fourth win of the split. How are you feeling? I mean, compared to other matches, this series was much tougher, so it's a big relief that we secured the win. Yeah, we had so many actions in this series, and Summit, you had some alpha moments today, so how are you feeling? The lane opponent was super strong, and the team itself was super strong as well, so it's a relief that we won. Game number one, you had so many actions, you guys, about every time you guys made an eye contact. It was pretty fun to watch. What about you guys? Well, that was a very tough one. That was not fun to play, to be honest. But I was looking for some late game power spike, you know. I just wanted to farm. What about you, Summit? Yes, it was hard. But GG, well played. It was really impressive to see you guys taking all the actions on and on. Was that the uh, mindset for today's series? When we kind of avoid fights, yeah, we get to lose traits, and we also kept in mind that we can also put up a great fight to a better a similar level. I want to ask you about the Lee Sun. This champion has been a mainstream pick on the top lane, and the last time it was played on the mid lane was a month ago by Faker. So when we see Lee Sun locked in, by Live Sandbox, was that plan to be on the mid lane? No, we wanted to wait until the end, but I also you know, tried to listen mid on solo queue as well, and I was ready to play it whenever I needed to, you know, in a given situation. Today, you guys added another win with the listen mid, but some of your listen is 0 and 2, but Faith is already getting the wins. How are you feeling? 
Nothing different, you know? Pretty much the same as mine. I think it was all about the luck. Fate, do you agree? I think he has better mechanics, but he's so bad at playmaking. So I, I don't want you guys to compare him with me. Yeah, top and mid, they are definitely a different roles. So I want to ask about the Renekton pick in Game 2 as well. This champion has become a trump card in the LCK, especially in the current patch. Uh, have your idea or opinion on that champion changed? It went as I expected, but you know, the turret dive from Africa was so on point, so I got crushed. And they were good. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. In game three, we had a lot of adjustments from your trap. And it was so, you know, on point. You know, blind pick, Ezreal, and then Udir came in, and then Rise to complete the club. What was the main theme of your draft in game three? Uh, we, uh, all the individuals on our side have great mechanics so we wanted to you know farm you know scale but unfortunately you had some huge accidents breaking out early on so it was so hard to get through especially you guys had a huge team fight victory around Drake back to back and after that team fight win summit you said follow me I'm gonna carry you guys I was focused on the game, so I don't re remember hearing that. I don't really like that because he is the captain. He should be the one leading the team with, you know, you know, keeping the calm, but I don't really like that. You know, I didn't really know that my mic calm will go on air, you know, the Siwanada thing happened last time as well. Do you want it to, you know, boost the morale or anything? No, that, just, that was just something like a spur of the moment. Leap Sandbox has pulled off fantastic team fight plays on and on. What was the key to, you know, that improvement with team fight execution? We try to play around fights and screams, and we are individually so good at fights as well. I guess the setup and the mechanical level are ready to pull off fights whenever they want to. You have secured the fourth win, and you'll be facing off DRX in your upcoming match. Whoever we are facing off, we would like to, you know, pick up a clean victory. We will prepare hard for that match in order to secure 2-0 win. I can see you sweating up here, sweat. You played so hard today at Summit. Would you like to add on to that? We will try to pick up a clean and solid 2-0 victory. This will be the end of the interview from Fate Summit from Leeds. Send boxes. I'm gonna pass it back to our casters. Thank you. Thank you.